Pastor Eli Leitzow again, Wheatridge Evangelical Lutheran Church, still studying the Ten Commandments. We're in the second table of the law. We're talking about the Fifth Commandment today. You shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. And this maybe is the, the quintessential one or the, or the commandment that makes the most sense when we're talking about the things of life uh, the things of good, intrinsic good that God has given to us uh, versus the things of evil. Because we can see all the way back in the Garden of Eden that there was life and that's all there was. There was no death, there was no sin, there was no suffering or pain or anguish or any of these things. It was all good and it was a good gift from our Lord and it was of life. And then we see that sin brings death. Sin is of evil. Sin is uh, the things of enmity and hatred and, and making us enemies of God. And that's what death is too. So when we're talking about this fifth commandment with our uh, friends and our family members, and this is kind of a, a big touchy subject nowadays, isn't it? Because we have to talk about these things of abortion. They come up. Things of euthanasia, things of assisted suicide. Things that actually really do deal with life and death. And I think we need to talk about them as uh, good versus evil. And we may not actually use those words because those can be touchy words when we're talking to our uh, friends and family. But I think we have to uh, delineate and make this division between the two. Because the things of life are always the things of good. It's a gift from our Lord. Our Lord is actually the one who's given us life. It's his to give, it's his to take away. We dare not despise our life, our life or our neighbor's life, and say that we have the authority over them. We can't do that. We don't have the authority to take away their life. It's only uh, the Lord's. The Lord actually gives us our life as a gift. It's a life that actually Christ has died for. And maybe we should think about it that way as well. From the person all the way in the womb to the 99-year-old lady uh, sitting with Alzheimer's in her hospital bed, this is a life that Christ has died for. And also, remember, we as Christians don't believe that uh, as soon as we die, that's it, right? That we finally transcended this uh, temporal world and we can slough off this physical body but no, we have the hope of the resurrection, not just of the spirit and soul, but the resurrection of the body. That's the end. That's the last day, right? That's the pinnacle of the, the second coming of Christ, the resurrection of the body. Well, if our bodies are going to be resurrected, then this life is too. Then Christ actually died for us, for all of us, not just for our spirit and our soul, but for this body too. So when we talk to our neighbors, when we talk to our parents, when we talk to our friends who have these discussions that we're going to have about life and about death, let's focus most importantly about this good gift that our Lord has given to us and the fact that Christ has died for us, for all of us. He's died so that we might have life and have it abundantly. Thanks be to God. Amen. Did we do good? Is that, is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give. Help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.